Forget the simple idea of how humans evolved proposed by the traditional out-of-Africa hypothesis, because a huge array of new fossils and genome studies has completely rewritten the story of how we came into being. Until recently, the story of our origins was thought to have been settled. Homo sapiens evolved in East Africa about 150,000 years ago, became capable of modern behavior some 60,000 years ago and then swept out of Africa to colonize the world, completely replacing any archaic humans in our path. But new fossils, tools and analysis of ancient and modern genomes are tearing apart that simple story. Indeed, the out-of-Africa paradigm has become so entrenched, that it is easy to forget how new the hypothesis is. For decades before its emergence, human origins research was dominated by the famous discoveries, Homo erectus, including Java man, Peking man, and Australopithecus afarensis, the famous Lucy discovered in Ethiopia in 1974. There was some debate about where modern humans appeared, and ideas were floating around of a recent African origin, but the fossil record seemed to support a model called multiregionalism. This theory argued that archaic humans were distributed across Africa and Eurasia at least a million years ago and evolved in parallel into modern humans. Then a team of geneticists sequenced 147 mitochondrial genomes from living people around the world. The mitochondria in cells are inherited from mothers only, and the study indicated that everyone was descended from a single woman, known as mitochondrial Eve, who probably lived in Africa about 200,000 years ago. The result was very influential, and was quickly consolidated into the recent out-of-Africa hypothesis, which is the idea that modern humans appeared quite abruptly in eastern or southern Africa sometime between 150,000 and 200,000 years ago. Based on archaeological evidence, it looked as though early Homo sapiens had bodies like us, but weren't as mentally advanced. Only later, about 50,000 or 60,000 years ago, did the full package evolve, perhaps due to a chance mutation, making dispersal out of Africa possible. This neat, compelling narrative became known as the Human Revolution. For a while, the fossil evidence supported this story. Although remains from the crucial time of about 150,000 years ago had not been discovered, there were several older human skulls that seemed to fit the idea. One of the most distinct features of modern humans is the shape of our skulls. Compared with our extinct ancestors, we have small, flat, delicate faces, prominent chins and spherical brain cases. A skull with all or most of these features will generally be classified as belonging to our species. Two of the oldest were modern skulls found at Omo Kaibish in southern Ethiopia in 1967. Known as Omo 1 and Omo 2, they are dated to about 200,000 years old and have a mixture of archaic and modern features, exactly what you would expect of an archaic human shortly before the evolution of anatomical modernity. Several other specimens from around eastern and southern Africa told a similar story. But the dates for Omo 2 are now disputed. It got even better in 1997, paleontologists in Ethiopia's unearthed three human skulls, two adults and a juvenile. The Herto hominins, known as Homo sapiens adultu, are between 154,000 and 160,000 years old, and have a mixture of archaic and modern facial and cranial features. They were found associated with tools that had elements of both old and new Stone Age technology. The hominins age, location and toolkit were neatly in tune with the recent out-of-Africa model, and convinced researchers that they were the probable immediate ancestors of anatomically modern humans. But discoveries since then have been difficult to slot into this neat little box. And the Jebel Erhoud fossils have done more than almost anything else to upend the recent out-of-Africa model. In a barrier mine in the foothills of the Atlas Mountains of Morocco in 1961, a miner made an incredible discovery, the near-complete human skull embedded in the sediment. Archaeologists called in to investigate found that the skull was old, but not ancient. The skull was filed away and largely forgotten, but the Jebel Erhoud skull has turned out to be a key to a new, slowly emerging paradigm. Back in 1961, Archaeologists noted that the skull had modern facial features, a flat and delicate face, and a prominent chin, together with an archaic, 
elongated brain case. When dating put it at around 40,000 years old, it was classified as maybe belonging to an African Neanderthal or a relic population of some other archaic hominin, and relegated to the margins of the history. But doubts about the dating persisted and in 2004, the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany reopened the site. The researchers hoped to get a more accurate date, which they did, but they also got more fossils, including another near-complete skull. It also had a modern face and ancient brain case. When the date came back, it was astounding, 315,000 years old, plus or minus 34,000 years. This was a serious blow to the out-of-Africa hypothesis. Anatomically, the skull is at least as modern as those found at Herto, which are considered to be right on the cusp of modern humanity. Indeed, it is a creature which is very nearly an anatomically modern human. And yet it lived at least 130,000 years before Homo sapiens was believed to have evolved, at a time when our direct ancestors were still smashing rocks together in eastern or southern Africa. It was also on the fringes of the continent, thousands of miles from the supposed cradle of humanity. When the new Jebel Erhau dates were revealed, they inspired a major rethink of other fossil skulls from around the same time. It turned out that these told a similar story. The Floris Bad specimen from South Africa, for example, is controversially dated to about 260,000 years old, but has a surprisingly modern face. But this date is now disputed as well, with many anthropologists believing it to be much younger. The same is true or some skulls from Tanzania and two locations in Kenya. All possess a mosaic of modern and archaic features, but oddly are also very different from one another. Consequently, from the bones of Jebel Erhoud and elsewhere, a new view of human origins is emerging. African multiregionalism doesn't completely overturn the incumbent model. The continent is still the cradle of humanity, although saying humans evolved in Africa doesn't mean very much, it's a vast area, and humanity did eventually disperse out of Africa to inhabit the entire world. If you look at a map, you realize that only due to a trick of the Mercator projection that you don't see what a vast continent it really is. North America and Europe could fit within its borders and more importantly the continent was a Garden of Eden during the Ice Ages, which were the predominant climate during much of the ancient past. In fact, the idea of a recent, localized origin within a discrete population has been buried. In its place is a much deeper origin story beginning at least 300,000 years ago, and perhaps as many as half a million years. However, in a paper titled Deciphering African Late Middle Pleistocene Hominin Diversity and the Origin of Our Species, scientists created what they called a virtual last common ancestor of all living humans. By mapping the morphological variety of the skulls of ancient and contemporary humans, including Neanderthals but excluding the archaic African skulls, they estimated what the skull of a supposed last common ancestor looked like in the early part of the Middle Stone Age. They then compared the virtual skull to the five most complete skulls from that time. The fossil with the greatest similarity to the virtual ancestor was the Florisbad skull from South Africa, followed by two of the East African specimens, Elia Springs and Omo II. Next came the Litoli specimen from Tanzania. Moreover, the North African skull from Jebel Erhoud in Morocco was the least similar, closer to Neanderthals. What this suggests is that we are descended from archaic Africans in southern and eastern Africa, but not from the ancient humans in the north. Furthermore, fossil finds indicate that those side branches persisted until surprisingly recently. Skulls with a classic mosaic of archaic and modern features have turned up in the Congo, Kenya, and in Nigeria. These skulls wouldn't look out of place alongside the African archaics, but have all been dated to as little as 14,000 years ago. They may represent final holdouts of those isolated populations that were dotted across Africa at the dawn of our species, according to the paper. If you are learning something from this video and want to see more like this, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're looking for a big framework in which to look at the evolution of modern humans, it is the African Middle Stone Age 
which refers to the period from about 300,000 to 100,000 years ago. At the start of this period, the whole continent of Africa, possibly even Greater Africa, which includes parts of the Middle East, appears to have been dotted with populations of archaic humans. These were often isolated from one another by geographical or ecological boundaries, such as deserts or jungles, and mostly evolved independently. Although they had sporadic contact and interbreeding, perhaps when climatic conditions changed and boundaries shifted. This fluid situation persisted for 150,000 years or more, and left behind those now familiar mosaic skulls. Genetic studies point in the same direction. Geneticists analyzed a collection of contemporary genomes from all over Africa, attempting to home in on the origin of Homo sapiens. But it did not point to any one particular place, it pointed to South Africa, East Africa and West Africa. Basically, it pointed to everywhere where scientists had samples from. Thus, the transition from archaic to modern human happened in different parts of the African continent. Therefore, African multiregionalism represents a major shift in thinking. There was no single ancestral population, but many. They were spread over a huge area, which merged and split and merged, evolving at different rates and in distinct directions in different places. The suite of anatomical and behavioral features that define modern humanity didn't appear as one complete package, but gradually coalesced across vast tracts of space and time. There was never a single center of origin in Africa. The anatomical diversity of these composite humans has inevitably stoked debates about which belong to our species, and which don't. Some fossils are widely accepted as being Homo sapiens, notably Homo 1 and the Herto hominins. The Jebel Erhoud fossils divide opinion, with some paleoanthropologists happy to accept them into the immediate family. The rejects are generally categorized, rather vaguely, as African archaics, which is essentially dodging the issue. It has been proposed that the Floris bad fossils be categorized as Homo helmi, but new findings appear to be undermining this idea. The new model is still a work in progress. Nevertheless, it is already having some major effects for other parts of the human origin story. One of these is the search for our last direct ancestor, the species from which Homo sapiens evolved. Under the Out of Africa scenario, this was assumed to be the last ancestor we shared with our sister species the Neanderthals, making it relatively recent. The numbers were vague, but people talked in terms of 150,000 to 300,000 years ago. The strong favorite was a species called Homo heidelbergensis, which lived across Africa and Europe from around 700,000 to at least 300,000 years ago. That put it roughly in the right place at the right time. And from an anatomical perspective, Homo heidelbergensis looks like a good starting point for both species. However, we now know it almost certainly wasn't, because the date of the Neanderthal split has been pushed way back. DNA evidence pushed the split between modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans back to around 765,000 years ago. That all but rules out Homo heidelbergensis, and points the finger at an earlier species. Even as it becomes harder to pin down the identity of our direct ancestor, the African multiregionalism model has shifted the spotlight onto a different and, arguably, more interesting ancestor question. If, as the hypothesis suggests, the African Middle Stone Age was teeming with groups of more or less modern humans, evolving semi-independently. Which of these actually gave rise to the contemporary human population? Unfortunately, at this point the trail goes cold, because the African fossil record is actually very sparse. There are some bones, but they are hard to weave into a big picture. The genetics is also fuzzy. The most recent analysis places the origin of modern humans between 260,000 and 350,000 years ago, which reflects the long process of patchwork evolution across Africa. So who was the last common ancestor? Genetics indicates that modern humans evolved in Africa, so remains of the same species would need to turn up in Africa or Greater Africa to bolster a hominin's claim to direct ancestry. We cannot even be sure the last common ancestor was in Africa. 
for all we know, it could have been in Greater Africa, where Denisovans and Sapiens split up nearly 800,000 years ago. It is really a matter of how you draw up the tree. Is Homo sapiens on the main trunk, a straight lineage all the way back to the split, or is it a branch? Who that common ancestor was, and when and where it lived, are currently an unknown.